There are lots of things that you can do with a mini PC. And there are lots of mini PCs out there to choose from. Some are cheap, some are good for basic stuff but not good for high-end stuff. Some are expensive and are good for high-end stuff but are overkill for basic stuff. So some are kind of in the middle and are kind of good at some stuff. And you want to know which one should you get for the stuff that you want to do. And let me guess, you want me to tell you. Well, you want to know what I have to say to that? Eh, sure buddy, I could do that for you. No problem. Lately, when I've been testing mini PCs, I've been trying not to focus too much on the raw data, like the benchmarks and the performance figures, because these things are meant to be used. However, when comparing mini PCs against each other, it's kind of hard to do that without getting into the nitty gritty itty bitties, as my mom would say. Today, we're going to look at the different types of tasks that you could possibly want to do on a mini PC and see how much you need to spend to do those things. We're going to check out some desktop stuff like 4K video playback and productivity stuff like photo and video editing. We're going to test out older PC games. We're going to try newer AAA PC games, and we're going to see what we need for high-end emulation, all with the goal of figuring out what kind of device do you actually need for that stuff and how much do you really need to spend. Obviously, there are different types of mini PCs at different prices and all of them have different specs, different hardware, different form factors, which is why I'm happy that my buddies over at GMK Tech were kind enough to send me these three mini PCs from their product line so that I can make this comparison. These three PCs represent three different price tiers of performance. So this should be the most scientifically accurate way to address this problem, if you think about it. Maybe you should start calling me Professor Techdweeb. <laughs> No, no, that would be silly. This Nookbox G3 is our low-end offering. It goes for 140 bucks on Amazon and you can get a cheaper bare bones option if you order right from GMK Tech. That applies to all these mini PCs, by the way. This thing features an Intel N100 processor with built-in Intel UHD graphics and some other stuff. Next up, this Nookbox M5 is the mid-range option. It's going for 280 bucks on Amazon. It has a Ryzen 7 5700U processor with integrated Radeon Vega 8 graphics and more stuff. And finally, this badass Nookbox K8 is the high-end top tier performance offering. It's 690 bucks on Amazon, and for that we get a Ryzen 7 8845U processor with integrated Radeon 780M graphics. And yeah, other stuff here too. But like I said, these mini PCs just represent the kind of performance that you'll get from mini PCs like these. You don't need these specific mini PCs, but if you do want any of these specific mini PCs, I'll have links in the thingy below if you want to pick any of them up. When it comes to using these PCs as PCs, we're going to test 4K video, light productivity work like Photoshop, and video editing. Our low-end G3 could definitely handle 4K video playback, although there was some dropped frames. 46 drop frames over a period of 20 seconds of playback. It's not the kind of thing most people would notice, but video files would definitely not think that this is good. In Photoshop, I have an action set of demanding tasks that I chained together to use as a benchmark, and the G3 was able to complete the actions in 48 seconds. And video editing was doable. I have an Adobe Premiere video project with three layers of 4K video with effects on them. And here, scrubbing the timeline was uh, usable, but for normal 4K video editing, this should still be no problem. And the render time was actually really solid. It took 11 minutes and 14 seconds to export this very complex 4K render. And I think that's just down to the N100 chip that's in this thing. For our mid-range M5, it was able to handle 4K video playback with only a few dropped frames. In our Photoshop benchmark, it was able to complete the job in 35 seconds. And for video editing, scrubbing the timeline was better here than it was on the low-end G3, but the export took almost twice as long, 21 minutes and 15 seconds. And our high-end K8 mini PC did the best of all these, which shouldn't be a surprise. It managed the Photoshop actions benchmark in just 19 seconds. Video editing had great performance 
nearly real-time scrubbing on the timeline, which is impressive for any PC considering how demanding this project file is. And the video took 10 minutes and 48 seconds to export. When it comes to games, let's get this out of the way. If you like low-spec games and indie games, then any of these PCs can play these kinds of games. So don't let anyone tell you that you need to have a gaming PC to be a PC gamer. If they do, tell them to shut up and slap them right in the face. And when you do, say, that's from TechDweeb. I wanted to take a minute to show you my new external games drive. I love this kind of setup because you can move the drive between computers and you only have to keep one game library updated. This one here is an external SSD, a freaking four terabyte SSD. It's the Crucial X10 portable SSD and this thing is badass. It's tiny, it has enough storage to hold a ton of games. I loaded this thing up with my Steam games and my personal build of Retrobat for emulation. This is what I'm going to be using to play games on these mini PCs today and I wanted to show it to you because I love it and I, I, I like to show you the things that I love, as you probably noticed. A broad category of games that I think makes mini PCs very appealing is older games. Here we're playing Skyrim Special Edition. Starting off with our low-end PC, this is 720p with the low settings and you'll get about 35 FPS on average with this. It's absolutely playable and honestly there's no reason you can't enjoy gaming at 720p and have a great time, but you'll sometimes need to tweak the settings to keep the frame rate playable. However, the mid-range PC is really good for games from this era. Here I'm running at 1080p with the high preset and this got 35 FPS on average. This is a fine frame rate if you're sitting back playing with a controller, but I'd probably choose to go down in the resolution to maybe 900p to get that closer to 50 or 60 FPS. Our high-end mini PC can handle games like this like a champ. I'm at 1080p with the ultra preset and I got 56 FPS on average. With these older games, you won't need to sacrifice anything really. Heck, the easier ones can probably be run at like 1440p or even 4k. Oh man, all this benchmarking has made me thirsty. Let's head over to the Bannered Mayor for a drink and a word from this video's sponsor, NordVPN. Oh, hi there. I'm just a friendly Nord from Skyrim, doing my favorite thing, drinking mead in the Bannered Mayor. Someone help! I just learned my personal info has been leaked on the dark web by evil necromancers. What am I gonna do? Us Nords often find ourselves in questionable quarters of Tamriel and the internet, and that's why we use NordVPN. With NordVPN, you can live a safer, freer, more better online existence with a single click. A VPN connects you with any number of access points around the world. Use this to access your favorite content from home, even when you're in Cyrodiil, or access Morrowind stuff when you're at home here in Skyrim. I'm not here to judge. This along with other perks like threat protection that safeguards you from accidentally downloading viruses, a dark web monitor that can let you know your personal info is floating around out there, and even a cross-platform password manager so you never forget your passwords. If you sign up using nordvpn.com slash techdweeb, you can get a huge discount with the purchase of a two-year plan and get four months free, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. So you'd have to be pretty dumb not to sign up if you think about it. Uh, what did you call me? Check out the link below if you'd like to learn more. Now if you'll excuse me. Ah! For modern AAA games, it'll really depend on the type of game, to be honest. With devices like the Steam Deck being as popular as they are, there's a lot of incentive for devs to at least try to make their games run well on modest hardware. So some will run pretty good on lower-end machines, but some won't. However, when it comes to our low-end mini PC, it's really not going to be able to handle any modern AAA game with any degree of success. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is pretty well optimized, but it's really struggling here. I'm at 720p with 50% resolution scale, which is basically 500p, and I'm on the low preset, and the game looks like garbage. And even with all these concessions, the game still isn't what I'd call playable. So don't get a low-end mini PC and expect to be playing AAA games, is what I'm say. Our mid-range PC will be able to handle lots of modern games, but with some serious sacrifices made. Here in Tomb Raider, I'm running at 720p with the low preset, and this is what's needed to get that FPS above 30. It's running well, it's totally playable, and I don't mind playing games at 720p when I need to, but I'm, I'm sure there will be lots of newer games that you'll have to run at even lower settings than this. But many will be playable, which is cool. 
In our high-end mini PC, we'll be able to handle Tomb Raider no problem. This is 1080p with the high preset and I got 40 FPS on average. Now, to be clear, this isn't anywhere near the level of performance that you'll get on a full desktop gaming PC with a dedicated GPU. There will always be sacrifices with mini PCs, but I dare say that a PC like this will handle pretty much any modern game that you throw at it to some degree. But if you're old, like me, you want to play games that old people play. I'm talking about retro games, of course, so let's talk about emulation. On our budget low-end mini PC, you'll be able to play a ton of stuff, everything up to PS2 and GameCube. For PS2 and GameCube, you can play most games for both those systems, and some games can be upscaled to 2x resolution, however the hardest games to emulate won't be playable. And nothing beyond that, so no PS3 or Xbox 360. On our mid-range mini PC, we're still not going to get PS3 or Xbox 360. <laughs> These systems are really demanding and you probably won't find any games that'll run. However, you can now upscale PS2 and GameCube and Wii up to 1080p, and some can go up to 1440p. And here, Switch is just on the edge of playable. I was playing Odyssey and it was mostly working with some areas of slowdown, so your mileage may vary. Probably the easier to run games will work fine. And you also get 3DS, and you can upscale most games to 2x resolution, and some can go beyond that. And finally, our high-end mini PC. And now we get PS3 and Xbox 360, finally. Here's Skate 3, which is one of the hardest to run PS3 games, and it's running amazing. This is at the PS3's native resolution, and some of the easier to emulate games can be upscaled to 1080p or beyond. And also, Xbox 360 was running great. I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, and this is a hard game to run, and it's running fine. And Switch is running like a dream now. Literally perfect performance. You're not going to upscale Xbox 360 to 4K or anything, but you can play basically any emulated game on a system like this. So, what have we learned today, kids? Well, let's recap, shall we? In the sub $200 category, you can get a PC like this, the GMK Tech Nookbox G3 with an N100 processor, which isn't amazing at desktop stuff, but it'll get the job done. It can play older games with modest settings. Newer AAA games are definitely not going to be doable on a PC like this, and you can emulate everything up to PS2 and GameCube. If you want to spend between $200 and $400, you can get something like this, the Nookbox M5 with a Ryzen 5700U. And with this, you can handle all the desktop stuff that you could need, play older games with respectable settings, and play newer AAA games as long as you lower some of the settings to achieve good frame rates. And you can emulate everything up to PS2 and GameCube, except now we can do upscaling. And you get decent Switch and 3DS performance. Or you can go all out and spend over $400 on something like this, the Nookbox K8, with a brand new Ryzen 7 8845HS. This will blaze through any desktop stuff that you throw at it. You'll be able to max out your older games. New AAA games can be played with respectable settings, and you can emulate everything. So I mean, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that the more you spend, the more you get. There were two things that surprised me here though. One is that the cheap little G3 handled video editing so well. And the second is that the M5 with the 5700U plays as much as it does considering it's less than 300 bucks. And keep in mind that any of these machines can emulate all the older retro systems and handle any of the bazillion amazing modern indie games that are released every day. So uh, pick what's right for you, but if you want to know my usual recommendation, it's to go for the middle ground. Buy something that's affordable, that can do a lot, and just accept that there's stuff that you won't be able to do. That's what I do when I don't have a company sending me the latest and greatest gadgets to share with you guys. But I can see the appeal of going all out and getting a machine that can do it all. <laughs> Let's be real here. I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money though. I'm just here to tell you what they do, let you decide for yourself, and thank you for watching this video and sticking around to the end. <laughs> it's a bit of a drier video with a bunch of boring benchmark numbers and stuff, but hey, not every video can be a playful romp through my twisted brain. I hope you found this helpful, I hope you had fun, and I hope you subscribe if you haven't yet so we can see each other again. And that's it from me for today. I'm TechDweeb, thanks for watching, Bye bye